verse 1 of Job chapter 3 in your Bibles. After this, Job opened his mouth and cursed the day of his birth. Can you imagine? The first time Job opened his mouth for seven days, he cursed the day of his birth. He said, May the day of my birth perish, and the night it was said a boy is born. That day may it turn to darkness, may God above not care about it. May no light shine upon it, may darkness and deep shadow claim it once more. May a cloud settle over it, may blackness overwhelm its light. This, friends, is a very flowery speech, but when you add it all up, boil it down and strain it, he's simply saying, I wish I hadn't been born. How many times have you said that? This is what Job is saying. Only he is saying it in very poetic words. Verse 6. That night may thick darkness seize it. May it not be included among the days of the year or be entered in any of the months. May that night be barren. May no shout of joy be heard in it. May those who curse days curse that day. Those who are ready to rouse Leviathan. May its morning stars become dark. May it wait for daylight and wane and not see the first rays of dawn. Verse 10 is very crucial. For it did not shut the doors of the womb on me to hide trouble from my eyes. It did not shut the door of the womb on me. Verse 11. Why did I not perish at birth? Why did I not perish at birth and die as I came from the womb? Why were there knees to receive me? Breast that I might be nursed. Job, friends, in these very poignant, deeply burdened, heavy words of pathos, verses 6 to 12 says, I wish I had never been born. It is interesting, my friend, that this attitude never solves any problems of this life. You may wish you had never been born, but you can't undo the fact that you have been. You may wish you could die, but you will not die by wishing. It is all just a waste of time. It may help a person to let off some steam. That seems to be what Job does, at least for now. Notice verse 13 and 14 now. For now, I have been lying down in peace. I would be asleep and at rest with kings and counsellors of the earth who built for themselves places now lying in ruin. Suicidal thoughts in verses 13 and 14. He describes death as the great equalizer. All sleep equally, Job says. Kings and counsellors of the earth who build themselves places on earth are now lying in ruins. Kings build great monuments, great pyramids for themselves. But finally, death is the great equalizer. Verses 15 and 16. With rulers who had gold, who filled their houses with silver, or why was I not hidden in the ground like a stillborn child, like an infant who never saw the light of day? Again, he speaks of death as the great equalizer. Rulers who had gold, who had their houses filled with silver, are all made equal at death. He wishes again that he had been stillborn. Why was I not hidden in the ground? He says, like a stillborn child, like an infant, who never saw the light of day. Friends, there are two things Job is saying in this chapter. One, he wishes that he had never been born. Two, having been born, he wishes that he had died at birth. He finds no relief from his misery. Verse 17, There the wicked cease from turmoil, and there the weary are at rest. Captives also enjoy their ease, they no longer hear. The slave traders shout, the small and the great are there, and the slave is freed from his master. Verse 20, why is light given to those in misery, life to the bitter of soul, to those who long for death that does not come, who search for it more than for hidden treasure, who are filled with gladness and rejoice when they reach the grave. Why is life given to a man? whose way is hidden, whom God has hedged in. For sighing comes to me instead of food. My groans pour out like water. In other words, 
Job's food was his tears. Job's groans was his water. Why is life given to a man whose way is hidden? You know, friends, God hides his purposes so that we may rely on his promises. Whom God has hedged in, Job says. You know, that's the most wonderful thing God does for us. He hedges us in. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock. But you notice here, Job pictures death as being preferred to life. He says that life is such a burden. He doesn't want to live. He would rather die. Job says he would welcome death like a miner who is digging for gold and gives a shout of joy when he finds it. He's in a desperate, desolate, despondent condition. You recall in verse 17 that we just read, Job says, The wicked at death cease from turmoil, the weary are at rest. Captives cease from their labor, the small and the great are there. The slave is freed from his master. Job is now saying these words. He speaks of the wicked, the weary, the captives, the small, the great and the slave. And then he says in verse 20, Why is light given to those in misery, life to the bitter of soul? Notice these two words, light and life. If you refer the New Testament, especially John's Gospel, you would see how John, the beloved of the Lord Jesus Christ, speaks of these two words as his theme in his Gospel. Light, life and love are the themes of John's Gospel. Here Job speaks in one fleeting passing sentence. Why is light given to those in misery? Are you in misery? Remember, Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus said, I come that you might have life. The light that brought life, that you might have this life more abundantly. John 10.10 10. Friends, he also speaks of love. God so loved the world. Again, John chapter 3. Verse 16, friends, Jesus, who is the fulfillment of the entire Old Testament, is also the fulfillment of Job's questions. Job asks, why is light? Where is light? Where is life? And he's looking for love. Friends, Jesus is the fulfillment of all of Job's questions and all of anyone's questions. Jesus is the love giver, the life giver and the light giver. Compare in your Bibles verse 20 and also verse 23. Notice what verse 20 Job says. Why is light given to those in misery? And then in verse 23 he asks, Why is life given to a man whose way is hidden? Why is light and why is life given to a man whose way is hidden and to a man whose life has become a misery? Friends, the answers to all these complex questions is found in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the New Testament, the Old Testament is revealed. Verse 25, What I feared has come upon me. What I dreaded has happened to me. I have no peace, no quietness. I have no rest, but only turmoil. You know, it is intrinsic of fear that when you fear, the same thing that you fear happens to you. Because fear has in itself a gravitational force that attracts your fears and converts them to reality. You know, friends, we tend to fear fear more than we fear reality. Our fears become our greatest enemy. The thing that depresses us can do us in, our fear. And Job says, what I dreaded has happened to me. Can you imagine this man in the lap of luxury having everything at his beck and call? He still had a hidden fear. A hidden dread. What I feared has come upon me. What I dreaded has happened to me. But I wonder if he would have feared the enormity of what he's going through. All his children killed. All his property destroyed. A wife who is nagging him. And friends who question his integrity. Job says in verse 26, I have no peace. No quietness. No rest. But only turmoil. Friends, let's see. These three words, a little more closely, I have no peace. Notice what Jesus says of these words, I have no peace. Jesus says, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled. Jesus is saying these words at the threshold of the Garden of Gethsemane, 
when his heart shall be troubled, he is concerned about our hearts. He says, let not your hearts be troubled because I, the Prince of Peace, am offering you my peace. The world's peace is transient. It comes today and goes today. It's a debatable subject. But God's peace, like God, is eternal and permanent. Then he says, no quietness. He makes me lie down in green pastures beside quiet waters. Jesus, the good shepherd. If you have Jesus, you have quietness around you. And then he says, I have no rest. Come unto me, all he who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You know, friends, like I said a few minutes ago, Jesus is the fulfillment of Job's cry. No peace, no quietness, no rest. Job, come to Jesus and you will have everything and no turmoil. You will have problems in life, but you will have also peace and rest in the midst of all your turmoil. The fear that something terrible is going to happen is the fear of great many people today. You know, friends, our problem is that we grab for our security blanket instead of grabbing for the Savior. Don't grab your own security blankets. They won't stay you for long. We ought to be using our Bible for our blanket instead of turning to other things. We need to rest upon the Word of God, friends. We need to rest upon God's Holy Word. That's the purpose of Through the Bible. One would almost get the impression that Job has lost his faith. He's actually saying things that are very strange. This is the bitter complaint of a man who is tasting the very dregs in the bottom of the cup of life. Trouble has come upon him and he does not understand at all why it should come to him. It is a monologue of complaint as his friends sit around him. The language is tremendous. But Job does not have the answer. It is black pessimism. Like human battles, friends, even spiritual battles are won in the mind. Before they are actually fought in the battlefield, they are won in the mind. Job lived such an upright, such a blameless life, totally positive before God. But look at the heart of this man now behind his beautiful vocabulary. Friends, look at all your problems and say this. Problems, you can't grow any bigger. But with God's grace, we can conquer any problem because Jesus is the conqueror. May God bless you.